Get ready for Smoke Night Live with Master Sensei. Dojo, what is going on? Man, I gotta tell you, I I am so ready to hang out with you guys tonight. Because today has been a long day. Hi huh, Jordan, Dominic. So we've been uh, we've been working here in the dojo studios all day long. And we're what we're doing here is we're we're drywalling, we're sanding, we're building we're installing stuff and all week long we were we were doing it we were prepared to to you know have the show this week and then i don't know if you guys knew this but some of you do but we got hit with the most insane blizzard of all time it was ridiculous we had uh, i think was this wednesday was it wednesday dominic it was wednesday wednesday morning we were supposed to have one to three inches of snow I got up and there's like five inches of snow. Not that Colorado, that's nothing. Five inches of snow, big deal, right? Well, within the next two hours, we got two and a half feet. Two and a half feet of snow. It was ridiculous. So we've been we were basically like snowed in for a couple of days. And the problem was we were like partially done with part of our studio project. And we couldn't do it because we were snowed in, so we couldn't get to the studio. So we had to, like, rush today to do it. Like, we're sanding. We've been doing all that. So that's why I wasn't hanging out with you guys on the dojo today because we were doing all this crazy stuff. And the, the, the dojo studios were a complete shambles about, what, two hours ago? Literally, two hours ago, this place was completely taken apart. And so we were rushing as fast as we could to get the studio back together so we could do the show tonight. We're super excited about the show. We've got a great guest. Uh, I'm going to bring her on in a minute. And uh, But before that, hey, guys, there's a couple things. First of all, uh, Cigar Wars in the dojo. Uh, today, or this week, we added five more cigars, and now there's over 200 cigars in Cigar Wars, which makes for about 19,900 battle combinations there's a lot of battle combinations so it's really rocking and you would not believe how many boats we get every day on cigar wars it's insane that part of the dojo app has just taken off we've gotten a zillion uh boats on cigar wars so it's super exciting so thank you guys for all the people that play cigar wars uh, the next thing I got to talk about is these t-shirts. Check this out. This t-shirt I'm wearing. This is the new t-shirt we just finished today. Right here. Boom. It's the uh, grunge. It's the dojo punk rock t-shirt. That's what we call it. Grunge bleached. What's cool about this shirt, there's no ink on it. The, uh, the printing, the printing, I can't really probably show you this, but the printing, it's actually bleached out right there. So there's no ink. So when you wear this thing, it feels really cool. It's super soft, like an old school punk rock concert t-shirt or something. And uh, so they're for sale now on the dojo. Just go to uh, scardojo.com, go to the shop, and uh, pick one up. Because these are limited edition. We're not going to make a billion of these. Small batch. Like, you know, like craft beer and like limited edition cigars. We do limited edition t-shirts. When they're gone, they're gone, and then we'll do something different. But uh, these ones are super cool. They kind of remind me of my old – when I was when I was a teenager, I was into the Ramones. I had a really cool Ramones t-shirt. So this is a lot like that. So super cool. So order yourself one today. Uh, you'll be glad you did. It'll be your favorite t-shirt in, in your drawer. Uh, finally, uh, next week we're going to have another show. Uh, next week, a, I got we have two really cool things that's going to be on the show next week. Uh, I'm not even going to tell you what they are because that would ruin the, the fun. But uh, though we're going to have a really cool guest, and then we're going to have a special report uh, from uh, from Miami on location. I'm not going to tell you the details. It's going to be really fun. So next Friday, we're going to have another uh, really cool show. By the way, normally we do bourbon 
Normally we do bourbon Fridays on the last Friday of the month, which would be this Friday. But we're going to save that for next week because uh, we didn't have time to get ready. So next week is going to be bourbon night, bourbon hearth. So get your bourbon ready to go. And, uh, and then also, finally, one last thing, April 23rd, I think. Right, Jordan? Is it April 23rd? I think it's Saturday, April 23rd is the fourth annual Cigar BQ. So if you're new to the Cigar Dojo and you haven't been around the Cigar Dojo much, the Cigar BQ is the coolest thing in the world. It is the day where we just barbecue food all day long, drink whatever you want to drink, mojitos, margaritas, whatever you want to drink, smoke tasty cigars, and barbecue. You know, barbecue whatever, steaks or chicken or anything. We're going to be giving away tons of prizes. Max Rocket, you guys know Max Rocket. He's the uh, a Dojo Hall of Famer. He'll be giving uh, barbecuing tips all day long and uh, how to make spice rubs and all that kind of cool stuff. And we're going to be giving away a literal, literal buttload of cigars. We've got Camacho, Room 101, tons of stuff we're going to be giving away on Cigar BQ. So mark your calendars. Don't make any plans. If your wife says to you, or your husband says to you, honey, let's go on a picnic on April 23rd, you got to say, honey, sorry, that's cigar barbecue, and I'm going to be on the dojo all day that day. So don't make any plans for April 23rd other than being on the dojo if you want to win a ton of really cool prizes and have fun. This is our fourth one, right, John? I think so. I think so. Official. Officially. Uh, because one of them we had before we were really even – anything we kind of just did it for fun so uh, it's gonna be a blast so hey guys uh, without further ado I want to bring on the, my guests and uh, I'm not sure I'm not sure Dominic is this is this the first female guest we've ever had on Smoke Night Live it, I can't think of another female guest which is wrong we should have had a lot of female guests by now Something is wrong with us, but uh, guys, if you haven't met Yadi Gonzalez from FTG Cigars, by the way, I'm smoking the new 20th anniversary right now, and I'm smoking the Connie. Dominic, you got, Jordan, you got the uh, Maduro? Jordan's smoking the Maduro. This is a, whoa, this is an amazing cigar. By the way, Yadi, I think you have some sort of notifications that are, that are going off, but uh, yeah, without further ado, let's bring on Yadi to the show. Yadi, welcome to Smoke Night Live, sister. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me and for being the first female. We gotta we gotta break that pattern at this point. I gotta invite some more females to join your show on Friday right. night. You gotta cut some slack here. Well, I've been trying to get you on the show for about six months at least, right? I mean, I've been, we've been talking back and forth and and, you know, you're a busy woman, you got stuff going on, uh, yeah. but you're finally able, able to make it on the show, so we're super excited. Uh, so, hey, let's, let's get right into it. Right. Yeah, let's get right into it. Uh, there's people out there on the dojo probably watching the show right now that may not be familiar with FTG Cigars. So give us a quick little overview, and then we'll get into, like, the history of it, because you got a lot of cool history behind your company. So, uh, first of all... Just introduce your company to the, the, the folks watching. FTG Cigars, uh, which is short now for Flor de Gonzalez Cigars, as my dad started the company. Flor de Gonzalez Cigars, people get tongue twisted trying to say the name, so I've cut that down to FTG Cigars and try to make it easier for them. Uh, but uh, my dad started this company legally now 21 years ago. and. Okay. Um, Basically started out of you know the uh, room in the house uh, about a year prior to that until he got all his licenses and got squared away and everything like that. Um, you know back in the boom, um, our cigars along with like say Perez Carrillo um, were one of the highest rated cigars made in Miami during the boom. They were the two biggest factories pretty much that were out here in uh, in Miami. Um, but my dad was just basically a person that um, did not know the language, had come to this country, you know, at an older age, 
and was just trying to make a living pretty much trying to make money didn't know how to you know make it uh, to the next level by marketing advertising the language barrier uh, but he was smart enough to you know um, put his his funds well to work within the industry he put some uh, of his funds into growing tobacco and ten years ago he started growing tobacco in Ecuador okay. um, so we're, we're small, we've kept small, but we're vertically integrated. And again, we've been around for quite some time. We make um, you know, these premium cigars and various uh, different uh, brands, some private labels. We also make some economic cigars, mongo cigars that you know, sell like hell because of course, you know, everybody wants to smoke a cigar that, that they can just you know, burn away doing something that's uh, they don't, they're not actually sitting down and spending the time. So that's really, you know, our bread and butter. Um, and we've been doing that since the very beginning. Uh, but uh, we've taken a turnaround, or I've taken it upon myself to, you know, turn it around and uh, emphasize on our premium stuff. Uh, as of our 90 miles, for instance, which was this seven years ago that we started that line. And uh, that was basically a turnaround for the company. And I think we're heading in the right direction. Uh, it's a little hard for me as, as a woman in the industry because I'm a mom. Otherwise, you know, it's it would be a piece of cake. I could still, you know, travel and stuff like that. But being a mother, you know, kind of holds me back a little bit. I have to be home, uh, can be out as, as much as I would like to, you know, um, work in the pavement out there. Yeah. But, so um, Anyone that, that's out there, please, you know, try these cigars. Ask for them. Flor de Gonzalez, FDG Cigars. A lot of folks, uh, you, you mentioned 90 Miles, and I think that most folks would probably recognize that one. Uh, but you make a bunch of other good stuff, too. In fact, my personal uh, favorite, probably besides this, and we'll talk about, we'll talk about this one in a minute, but um, my personal favorite besides this particular one is the Spectrum. And uh, Spectrum, it really blew me away. That was a cigar that, I don't know, like sometimes, you know, when you're a blogger like we are, you get cigars sent to you all the time. And uh, that one you had sent us some to sample and try. And, man, I had that one. And, and, and to this day, I'm saving, like, the last few of those because that thing's just like a sweet, buttery chocolate. I really love that. I mean, I haven't had – a, a cigar from you guys that I don't like, uh, but it's cool that you guys have some of these. You know, they you have some affordable stuff, and then you have some sort of high end stuff. I mean, you're really the true meaning of a boutique cigar company. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Spectra was a was a little hidden uh, gem for us. We um, had originally made that cigar as a private label, and uh, I have to be. Quite frank, it was my first like big boo boo, if you will, in this industry. I put into production a bunch of cigars for a private label, and I shouldn't have without this up front. Um, thinking that they would come forth with, you know, the agreement we had. Long story short, they didn't, and I had those cigars sitting there aging, and we had worked with them, uh, worked on the blends, and worked on the cigars um, for a long time. They had gone to Cigar Aficionado for a rating under another name and got rated in 92 oh. without them ever even advertising with Cigar Aficionado. Uh, but, you know, I was left with like 3,000 boxes of different sizes of that particular cigars, all packaged and everything. And the company went under. The company that we're making them for mm. kind of tried to run before they can, you know, crawl and walk uh, and take baby steps. And um, I was kind of like in that terminal with them. So I repackaged everything. So the cigars had literally been aged in cedar wraps for years. Um, we used a Peruvian um, Ligero in there that I think gives it that magnificent, uh, sweet, um, um, buttery taste to them. And uh, we did well. You know, at least I, I got back some <laughs> investment, if you will. Um, so it turned out okay. It was work. It was a lot of work. It was uh, a lesson learned. But at the end, it uh, it worked all right. Yeah, yeah. If you guys are out there, I'm sorry. No, I'm, I was just gonna say if you're if you if you're out there watching the show, 
and you see some Spectras out there, grab them because they're they're really good. If you like a Maduro, it's sort of like the the essence of a Maduro, but it has a real uh, milk chocolatey sweetness to it. It's not real overpowering. It's almost like an inhalable smoke. It's just so smooth and good. Uh, but let's get on to um, – Let's move on to this particular stick. This is the one that you introduced at the show, IPCPR, last year, yes. the uh, 20th Anniversario. And uh, maybe you can just step us through this stick, tell us a little bit about it, what it's all about, and then I'll add my comments too. Okay. Uh, well, the uh, 20th anniversary basically was you know, a uh, mark of a milestone for us, um, being 20 years in the industry. and. Um, what I did to you know celebrate that um, for our company was uh, my dad started the company with two wrappers a Connecticut wrapper cigar and a broadleaf wrapper cigar regular round uh, cigar Parejo. and so for our 20th anniversary I wanted to bring back that blend with a new uh, or, or a, a you know a little bit more of a taste profile and a little bit more strength uh, than the original line of cigars, but using the two wrappers. So um, we came out with the Connecticut uh, 20th anniversary and the Connecticut Broadleaf 20th anniversary. Uh, fillers are Nicaraguan. Uh, both cigars, uh, well, the Connecticut you're smoking uh, is a medium body cigar, uh, full flavor. I hope you're enjoying it. The Broadleaf, it's a uh, medium to full body cigar with a lot of flavor. And they both have been very well accepted, very well liked um, by everyone that has tried them so far. The reviews online, which I I'll appreciate, uh, are all very good so far. Uh, half will rated it, cigars not rated it. Hopefully I'll get I'll hear from you guys soon. Yeah. And um, we're, we're happy, we're very, very happy and excited to to stay in this industry for as long as we have, pretty much being under the radar, if you will, um, yet, you know, making, you know, strides. And, um, and, and we're gonna continue to do so. I know we got some, some very odd stuff to look forward to with all the laws and everything like that, but, uh, mm -hmm. but I'm very confident that we'll overcome that and continue to move forward. Now, is this a, uh, is this a limited cigar? Is this uh, this is a limited. It's a limited uh, edition cigar. Yes, it is, and um, we're uh, we're basically coming down to. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure what our inventory is right now, but uh, probably have maybe 200 boxes left of these cigars. Wow. Okay. Like 50, yeah, it's it went well. It sold uh, well, and. Um, I do have some as they come in 20 count boxes, uh, but I made a special batch for uh, of 10 counts, uh, which those I, I do have uh, some more of. And I think I sent you some of those. So, guys, uh, hey, this is your chance this week. In fact, it's, it's actually the contest is essentially over. We'll judge it later tonight. But uh, we're giving away two of these boxes of 20 counts right here. We're going to give away a, uh, a 20 count Maduro, and we're going to give away a 20 count Connie. And then there's also going to be uh, two second place prizes. They get the uh, 90 mile samplers. So there'll be four winners tonight, and uh, we'll pick the winners later in the show. But uh, if you want to get your hands on these and you don't, you don't think you're going to win the contest or you didn't enter um, the spring break contest on the dojo, I know these are available at Famous and also at JR Cigars. So you can order them at either of those places. And uh, also, hey, just if you're at your you know, local B&M, make sure you ask them, hey, you should carry these because this is a killer cigar. I mean, it's right up there with you know, any, anything that you're going to buy. Uh, it's extremely awesome. We're going to review this. Uh, the review will be out next week, but pretty much everybody at the dojo – like these, we're, we're right now. We're just trying to figure out: should we review the Connecticut or should we review the Madeira? We don't know. Thank you, Paul. How about that? <laughs> or both, possibly. Uh, hey, while we're watching the show, if you're watching and you want to ask Yadi a question, uh, as always, just post it on the dojo with hashtag AskDojo, and uh, we'll try to get it on the show uh, 
Uh, we'll try to ask her on the show before we end tonight. But, um, so Yadi, one thing that really interests me is the fact that being a woman in the industry, uh, you may get asked this question a lot, I don't know, but what's it like being a woman in the industry? I mean, predominantly, let's face it, I mean, just facts are facts. Uh, most of the guys that we have on the show are guys. And uh, most brand runners are guys. And love them all. But uh, it's cool that we have a female out there doing this. What's it like being a female in a predominantly, you know, sort of male industry? What do you think of that? What are your thoughts? Well, I, I think I have a, I have a, you know, it's something positive. Um, it's it's positive in the sense that uh, if you know what you're doing, if you know um, your products well, um, there's no reason you should be intimidated to be in this industry at all i think more women should join and um you know negative uh part of this you know every now and then you get a jerk that'll say something stupid and uh will you know try to you know say something that's totally inappropriate and it's like get out <laughs> but that's that's about it i don't think there's anything negative about being a woman in the industry um i think we like I said, we have a, an, an advantage um, amongst men, if you will. Um, you just have to, you know, know what you're doing and you know, keep your, um, uh, I put this, uh, keep yourself together. Always be, you know, don't over drink, over, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> well, I think I think you're a breath of fresh air in the industry, and you're certainly the most easy to look at that we've ever had on the show because I mean normally we have guys mm -hmm. like Eric Espinoza, Steve Saka, you know I mean those kind of guys mm -hmm. let's face it they're ugly I mean um, you know that's, that's what it comes down to but but hey what about women cigar smokers in general do you see this uh, as something that's growing I mean when we go when we travel around we went to California uh, for the California Mega Herf and there was a lot of women involved in that and it seems to me like maybe, uh, you know, you've got, you know, Scar Vixen, she's, she's doing stuff. And I know that um, uh, Grace, who's now married to Gabriel, she had a group of women that were smoking. It seems like maybe uh, women cigar smokers, that sort of group is sort of growing. What are your thoughts on women cigar smokers just in general in the business? I think so. I, I do see it grow in, uh, in the women that are smoking, women that are getting in the industry, women that are representing cigar brands. And, uh, and it's like I said, it's all good. There should be no reason to be um, intimidated by the fact that it's ruled by, by men. Uh, I mean, we might not outnumber them uh, uh, at this point, but we can definitely be part of it. And uh, it's a great thing that more and more women are getting involved. There's a groups online, um, like you said. There's there's Grace and there's um, you know Cigar Vixen and there's just a quite a few others. And um, like I said, it's it's um, there's no reason not to to interface in, with with the with the men and the cigar smoking. It's, yeah, you know uh, what it's cool, Yadi, is like um, when when we went on Cigar Safari, uh, we uh, one of the dojo. Uh, hardcore members came along and, and she's a woman and you know there was just it wasn't as if like oh this is a woman and that she just fit right into the gang i mean cigar smoking is great because uh, it just seems to just be a welcoming community kind of no matter who you are or what your beliefs are people just like to hang out and that's sort of something that i think sort of crosses any kind of uh, gender boundaries or political boundaries. Cigar smoking seems to just bring people together. Yeah, exactly. And that's what's you know what's so much fun about this industry. Um, it's just all one big family. Everyone gets along great. And um, like I said, I really haven't had uh, many bad experiences, uh, if you will, being in the industry. So I love it. Let's talk about you now. I follow you on Facebook, and I sort of I like to think that I live vicariously through you because you're always doing something wild and fun. I don't know if it, maybe it's your is, are you with your daughters a lot? Is that is it, you're always at some sort of party, some sort of event? It seems to me very like, social is the problem. 
You are a social butterfly. You are, you're everywhere. You seem like you're having a great time. I do have a good time. You know, you have to, you have to enjoy life. Um, when you look back and realize that it's, uh, you know, it can go in the blink of an eye. Uh, things can just go wrong. Uh, they're fine today and not uh, so well tomorrow. You have to enjoy it. You have to make the very best of every single day and, you know, live it like it's the last day. So if, you know, if I get invited to go do something later on tonight, that's fine. I'm going to go right ahead and do it. If I don't get too much sleep, well, you know what? I don't get too much sleep. I get up and go the next day. And I'm, I'm just very active. I, I like to do, uh, be involved socially in, in different uh, events. I, I you know, like to go out and get my dance classes on and, and, and go to the gym and just um, go out, dinner, just uh, always doing something, you know. I say sometimes, uh, and I heard this from a friend, and it kind of stuck to me. Uh, they're like, you know, Yadi, I think you were born with an, with a, what was it, with a, an additional battery pack. Oh, yeah. And somehow I think I am. I have uh, all the energy in the world to just go, go, go. And um, it's, it's fun. I'm enjoying life. Uh, my, my daughter's are already a little bit more grown now. So I, you know, they're still, you know, I have a 14-year-old and an 18-year-old. So um, they still need, obviously, my attention, and they get it. We do a lot of stuff together. We go to the beach. We go to, the, you know, their friends like to hang out with me, <laughs> which is, you know, kind of interesting. So um, just, yeah, I definitely like to be social, go out and have fun. All right, here's a question I got from the dojo community. Hold on, let me get to it. Jordan's got, you got so many notifications, I can barely do this. All right, this one's from Max Rocket. This is a great question. Um, he wants to know why the 90 miles is called the 90 miles. Mm -hmm. right. um, 90 miles, um, just a, a quick, because um, it's a little bit of a long story, but uh, we had a sales um, uh, director who passed away, and um, he was at... Um, he was in Chicago with a sales rep doing uh, some sales calls, and the guy says, "Look, let me take you to this little Cuban restaurant to see if you, uh, you know, if this is real good Cuban food." So he takes him to this restaurant, it's a little hole in the wall, and he's looking at the name on the wall, and he's seeing 90 miles, and this guy's like, "Well, that sounds like it could be a really good name on a cigar." So he calls me late that night, about 10 o'clock at night, and he says, "Yadi, what do you think about this, about 90 miles?" I'm like, "What about 90 miles?" But that was just his come across. What do you think about 90 miles? Like, do you see it on a cigar? And immediately it was like, bam, yes, of course I see it on a cigar. That's how I came to this country. I crossed those 90 miles. I came from Cuba. I was born in Cuba, and I came in 1980 during the Mario boat lift. Mm. Um, so immediately it was like, you know, love at first heard mm -hmm. um, that name. I said, it'll, it'll definitely come together. And we were working on a blend for a cigar, and... I went online and trademarked that name that same night. Oh. No one had it, so I took it. And uh, and it's done well. So that's the reason behind 90 Miles, uh, the way it came about and um, and all, you know, that meant for us um, because it's it's a legitimate, you know, obviously we're 90 miles away, but I crossed those 90 miles on a boat to get to this country. Um, so it all came together very, very well. Now, a funny story, the guy that had this restaurant in Chicago, um, I went back, or I went to Chicago, and I wanted to go see this place, and I met the owner. It turns out the owner went to school with me, um, graduated with me from, uh, from uh, high school, and uh, his last name is Gonzalez, like me. He also came on the Marriott Boat, and he's very successful now. He's got about three restaurants in Chicago, and is doing very well with the 90 miles. So I like to think it's a, it's a lucky number. Wow. Uh, it's on well for him it's done very good for us and it's going to do better because i know that when things change uh with these you know with cuba and the united states uh i think 90 miles will definitely you know take a take a run at that point and and, and like yeah. do I much want, better i want to ask you about that i mean um so 90 miles from cuba to the tip of florida yeah. um so there's a lot going on you know uh president obama trying to like open things up. Uh, I'm in an interesting position where I get to talk to a lot of folks like you and 
Eric Espinosa, Santana, Gabriel, and there's a wide ranging opinions about uh, the stuff that's going on right now, you know. And so I'd like to get your opinion. What do you think about, you know, Obama traveling down there, hanging out last week? What do you think about the uh, the relations changing? I have strong opinions, but I'd like to hear your opinion about what you think. You know, I have to say that my opinions were uh, were very strong, and and they still are to a certain degree. I was brought up, uh, you know, with the mentality: you left Cuba for a reason. We left Cuba because we um, didn't have the freedom. We we you know uh, were persecuted for whatever. You couldn't you you couldn't eat, buy meat. My parents, my father couldn't feed us. You know, so so all this crazy stuff that always went on, you know, in the country. And, and I was always taught, you know, we left and we don't go back until it's free, until it's 100%. Um, and I stuck to that. I've never been back to Cuba. And, um, and I really don't think I want to until it is. But um, I think I do look forward for a change. I, I do look forward for, um, you know, for, for for, for a change altogether, you know, it's not just say, let's lift the embargo and nothing changes over there. If nothing changes over there with the regimen, then it's, you know, the embargo people say it's, it's senseless, it's, you know, it's still not going to help, um, um, you know, the actual Main Street of Cuba. Um, I don't know if, you know, if that's going to be it or not, but there has to be, uh, you know, uh, a stepping stone where they start somewhere. And um, I wasn't happy with Obama going to Cuba at first, but I think he cleaned up his act at the end. And, you know, by saying, you know, don't be afraid to have elections. And, you know, if that were to happen and the people of Cuba choose the Castros again, well, then they chose the Castros. But I think that that's what they need. They need, you know, an election and they need someone, you know, like to tell them, um, you know, do 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 what you have to to have some some sort of democracy in that country, and and then we can see a change. And as far as this business in Cuba, um, I think a lot of people in this industry are looking forward to that and and are already going there and seeing. I I understand a couple of people went to the um, Habano Festival this year. Mm. Um, you know. Yeah, I think that's the thing. You don't uh, hear it. You might not hear it too often. It might not be posted on Facebook, but it did happen. Right. And uh, and they do that because they, they see that there is going to be an opportunity if there's a change um, to do business there. Um, right. You get cigars, they're very expensive, and people here want them. Uh, but um, once they have to pay every time that they're going to smoke a cigar, you know, $30, I'm not sure how many of them are going to be smoking. So it's going to be a fast, a fast turnaround. And then it'll be, I, I think if there's an opportunity, um, definitely, but a change within the government is necessary. A hundred percent. I think that's the thing that most people don't understand. It's like, they it's want the like, change. They want the change. But they want it to actually. They want it to actually. You know. I lost your. I lost. Yeah. Them. Okay. Oh yeah, we got. I lost the, the, oh, yeah, the voice. Feedback. 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 All right. Uh, All right. Uh, Hold on. Let's see. Hold on. Let's see. I'm gonna change my. See if we can get that feedback out of there. That's the weird thing, Jordan. Like, ah, All right, Yachty, let's, uh, All right, Yachty let's, uh, let's pick the winners. Let's pick the winners. You ready? You ready? Ready. Let's do this. Okay, so uh, we have uh, eight finalists, and you're going to pick four winners. Four winners. Four winners. So I'll show you all four. You, all four. Eight, and you pick eight, four of them. Eight. Yeah, but it's, it's, yeah, but it's, it's, it's cool. all right. Here we go. All right, here we go. These are the spring break. Are the spring break. Can you see that? Uh, can you see that? 
Yes. CO3R. All right. All right. So he's the first entry. He's got first his entry. Uh, uh, bikinis on beers and a sports and a cigar. Then we got uh, Jake then F. We got, uh, Jake F. We spent the spring break. Uh, <laughs> spring break uh, nice spring break. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, the lady of the week. The lady of the week. Alright. Fire B. He's uh, Fire B. He's, uh Doing his Easter Bunny things. Easter Bunny things. Uh-huh. <clears throat> Another Easter Bunny. Another Easter Bunny. Donald S. Check this Donald one. Donald S. Check this one. My daughter wanted to go to water. My daughter park. wanted to go to water. Park. But I wanted to go to water. It's a good way to compromise. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Oh, God. Uh, here's the first. He's gonna uh, go. First, the, he's gonna go first time with his. First time. Here's uh. Here's, uh, uh, uh break. 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 And here's here's all eight. Here's, here's all eight. So I'm gonna so give you. I'm gonna give you. And you just pick eight. Uh, you just pick eight. Four uh, of those. Four of those. Four of those. Who picks? I pick. Yeah, you want to pick? Uh, yeah, you want to pick? Uh, you pick one. I'll pick one. You pick one. I'll pick one. We'll take turns. We'll take turns. Okay, so we'll we'll do the Colorado guy just because you know that was pretty daring out there. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> That's the best. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna uh, go with. Uh, I'm gonna go. The water park. I'm gonna go with Donald. Donna. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Which one, Donna? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Donna. That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Okay, you're up. Okay, you're you're somebody up. else? Yeah. All right, so I'll one of my lady smokers out there. Oh, uh, Lady of the Leaf. Uh, lady of the Leaf. <laughs> Very yes. nice. Very nice. And then finally. And finally. Let's see. See. I'm gonna go with CO3R. Go that first one. The first one. Okay. All right, so that's the four winners. All right, so, that's the four winners. All right, so we'll get those guys. We'll get those guys. Their prizes. Their I don't prizes. know how you got bad feedback all of a sudden. So I apologize for that. I apologize for that. But uh, hey, so what's up? What's up next? What's next. coming up next? What's coming up next? I can barely hear you. What's next for you? For us, next, we're working on a on a new uh, cigar for this year, and um, we're gonna go back and stick to our ninety miles again. Only this time, we're doing it in Spanish, noventa millas. Um, I, I the, the brand was trademarked in, in English and in Spanish. <laughs> I have to put it to use in Spanish, and I like the sound of it. So first we did it in English, now we're going with the noventa millas. And um, we're working on a very, um, very nice uh, blend, a different uh, cigar band. Um, and this is all going to be ready for the show. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Awesome. Okay, so folks, yes, okay, so folks if you're watching the show, sorry for the show, sorry for the feedback. But uh, grab the uh, cigars. cigars. Good luck. Uh, congrats, Good luck. To the congrats to the winner. You guys get this. You guys get this. The first two the first two of the, the big prize. First two of the big prize. First two of the big prize. So uh, so Yadi, so, uh, so thanks for so Appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Thank you, Eric. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having us on the show. Thank you very, very much. I had a great time. And uh, all the people that, are, uh, that came on tonight, the ones that came on to the uh, contest, congratulations. I hope you enjoy the cigars. Um, follow us on Facebook, Instagram, um, Twitter. And uh, a lot of new and exciting things coming up for Florida Gonzalez. Um, Keep us in mind. Ask your tobacconist, Lorda Gonzalez. FDG cigars. 
Boom. Boom. All right, we'll see you. On, we'll see All right, we'll see you. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you. All right, guys, hey, uh, sorry about that feedback. I uh, got some crazy feedback at the end there, but we're, we're good now. I want to thank Yachty for being on the show. Uh, we'll be reviewing this stick this week. Uh, super good. And, but tonight, let's have some fun. I, I really need this, guys. I really need this. It's been a long day. Uh, uh, Jordan, get that heater going. Yeah. It's been a crazy day. A lot of sanding, a lot of uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, Dominic, you ready to have some beer and cigars? Ready to have some beer and cigars? All right, so we'll meet you guys on the dojo. Uh, thanks to Yachty for being on the show. And remember, never smoke alone. We'll see you next week. Got a huge show.